very uh, nice uh, hippopotamus. I don't know to say this in English. And if I launch a terminal, oh, crap, I'm uh, it's English keyboard. Uh, Okay. Okay, good. I bad. Okay. So I'm Ubuntu, I'm in slash home slash Ubuntu, so you should be in the same place. Yes, yes, you do not have a Darshan directory yet. But here, if you go into, you should see this input uh, dash output. So if you go here, then you will find Darshan. Is it okay for you, uh, uh, May Young, Gupta? So what is possible is that it depends when you have fetched the uh, summer school VM. Okay, good. Is that uh, we have added Darshan in the virtual machine, I think uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago or even maybe one week ago. So if you uh, download the VM, uh, uh, early version of the VM, maybe you do not have Darshan into it. So maybe you should download it again. Uh, I will post the uh, link here. So the issue is that it's large file, you know, it's a four gigabyte. So it could take a bit of time to download the new version. Ah. Okay, no, if we go to uh Pardon me. If we go to Darshan, there is this, okay, so there is a bit more because I did uh, some tests, but let's say that what is interesting for us is this run test.sh. And if we use this, then you see the script is launching uh, IOR. So I'm running this as an end user, no root access. So IOR is launched. We get some information about the nature uh, of the run, so the, the parameter. So we see, for example, this line means transfer size. So individual IO are all of the size of 264, uh, 260,000 bytes. Okay, and then the script is telling us several things. So is, oh, there is many, I mean, there is already some log file on my system, but what we need here, I think is this one. So we do this. So basically we call the, the per script 
provided by Darshan, the Darshan job summary on this log file. And it's working. And it is going to, to generate, I don't know why it's okay. Now, if we look at what has been generated, you see from today, we have this file. So this is a, a PDF file and we can look at it. And this is a, a job summary. So from the monitoring of the IO, what Darshan is able to tell us, so two processor, runtime one second, yes, it was very short. So if you remember the command line, it was uh, MPI exec uh, dash MP2, so two proc, here it is. The amount of data which has been written is fairly small, four megabytes, and the, this is average speed, pretty good, but of course, everything is in memory. I mean, for four megabytes, you should not look that much at the, uh, the bandwidth because there is a lot of caching in the file system, right? So we see that on this one second of execution time, almost everything is compute, which makes sense because we said that the four megabytes has been written down at the range of more than 1000 megabytes per second. So we had one second of execution time on, we have maybe a one hundredth of second in IO. So IO is negligible because again, I think everything has been uh, caught by the page cache. But nevertheless, that's just an example to illustrate that Darshan is working. And then we have this breakdown. So POSIX, this is the way that uh, IO are called within the application and STDIO, it's when we are using um, standard file descriptors such as uh, standard output, uh, STDR, and things like that. The IO size, we know that the benchmark was called with um, uh, IO size of 260K um, block. So everything is in the bucket between 100K and 1 megabyte. So we have this exercise, so 16, 16 uh, IO call, each with this size. And now we have, what is interesting here is a timeline. So from the beginning of the application up to the end of the application, so one second later. So of course, on such a small uh, benchmark, it's a bit meaningless. But let's say this is to show you the content of the summary. We have a breakdown between read and write. And then we have factual information, I mean, uh, uh, quantitative information, which are quite interesting. What is shared? What is the impact of metadata? So you see, uh, I mean, it's questionable, right, to, to see this amount of digit. But again, there is a bit of a distortion due to the very small execution time. One second, it's crazy for a benchmark. So on which file system, because we can have several file systems mounted on the node, for instance, we can have a, a NFS mount point. And read, write uh, the nature of the MPI, uh, uh, of the POSIX IO pattern, some information about, you know, the, the time uh, distribution and things like that. So if you are able to see this, then you are in a very good shape. It means that your Darshan installation is working. Ah, apparently I'm providing wrong information on the chat. <laughs> Sorry about that. So once we have check that Darshan is correctly installed. We can move to the uh, next part. Um, uh, so we are at this stage. 
where we have validated the installation of Darshan. Now, the next piece is to download the small example which uh, we have provided for this hands-on session. So you need uh, to access uh, the GitHub, so Constantinos Chazapis or colleague from DDN. And once you have this, there is, uh, okay, maybe I can, you should have a, a directory name, easyways demo darshan slash dear one, two, three, four, actually. Uh, sorry to uh, for another question. Uh, I was I was changing the region region language so they didn't pay attention to to the first test. After the uh, round the round test, uh, what did you do to get to the PDF file? Yeah. Oh, okay. So no problem. So if, if once you you run a run test at the very end of the the script uh, the. Um, uh, okay, I have this. <laughs> um, there is a line which posts you, uh, which post. okay. You see the very last line? No run darshan dash job summary and there is a name of the file. Yeah, that's right. So you, you just copy paste this line and execute it. Okay. Then the system should, you know, think a bit for maybe a few seconds. And if you do a ls in the directory where you're in, so slash darshan, you should see a new PDF file. And this is the one that you can look yeah. at with uh, okay. Ocular. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. Do, do you get the the PDF? The folder I got easy ways. Yes. Ah, master. You got master. Uh, I suppose this is correct. <laughs> um, do you see dear one, dear two, dear three into it? So let's go into dear one, and there is a, a, a couple of uh, excellent. There is a okay. Maybe I, I'm going to stop the the PDF and jump to the virtual machine. Okay, so we are in the VM. So now, if we go into the easy way the modern, you should see this. Pro directory, a tarball. 
on the readme. So let's go down into the first directory. Oh, pardon me. Uh, okay. So let's try this one, file per process. So as you can imagine for file per process, it's going to be a nice IO pattern in the sense that we will have one file per process. So no congestion. So no multiple processes trying to write to the same file. So the option in this script, it's dash C for the number of client nodes. So in our case, we have one node. Maybe you can test with multiple. And then we can uh, define the number of MPI rank running on this client node. So let's say that we want to have like eight processes running on the local node. So I see no LD preload. So it's not going to work because I need to LD preload. Uh, where is LD preload? Dash and lib, yes. So I need to state uh, where is my dash and lib. Um, locate the dash and uh, lib .so. Okay, so to have the script working, I need to do this, uh, export dash n lib equal this, and now I can run my fair pair process. So no dash n is preloaded correctly. I'm running the code with MPI. I'm going to take a bit of time. So I have my eight rank writing. Each rank is writing in a different file. You see local output uh, suffixed by the MPI rank. So there is no um, sharing by any kind. There is some uh, information reported by the application itself. So file per process.sh is writing down some information and we can check that what the application is reporting itself is correct using Darshan. So basically here we say that the IO time is half a second, which is pretty limited. And we are writing at one gigabyte per sec. So now we need to, to find the, the Darshan uh, log file and to execute the dash and job summary in order to find um, to have the PDF. So where is the dash and log file? So it's going to be normally in input slash dash and so two directory above. I'm looking here. Crap. 2021. Okay, maybe let's do this. Where is my log file? So this is this one, if I'm looking at the timestamp. Okay. And then I'm going to generate the Darshan summary, job summary .pl on this file.
Are you able to, to reproduce this? Maybe I should allocate a bit more resource to the VM. So it's over. So let's see if the PDF has been successfully generated. Okay, excellent. So now if we look at this, the summary file, what do we have? Okay. We say that um, the bandwidth was reported by the application was almost one gigabyte per, was around one gigabyte per second this is what darshan is finding uh, also and he was uh, reporting also the application was reporting half a second spent in io uh, can we find can we find this information somewhere here it is so if you sum up these three elements, you will basically arrive to almost half a second. So it's, I will say, well aligned with what the implication has reported, report, was reporting itself. Uh, basically, I, we, I just add a, a timer into the app. So just a simple way to show that uh, somehow Darshan is correctly capturing the cost of I.O even if we compare to internal timer. So there is no need for the developer to add the timer. Of course, it's always better to if you can add the timer by yourself, but then some all uh, the profiler allow you to to save this burden of, you know, instrumenting yourself your application. So we see that the IO arrive at the end of the time. So it was running during uh, 16 seconds, but all the I.O. occur at the end and they are kind of synchronous. So we see that the, the first thread start to write at the same time. So we see that uh, it's MPI I.O. Uh, because MPI is reporting here. So you can play a bit with the parameter of the application uh, by allowing more thread if you want otherwise we can move to the second uh, script which is not fpp but SS, ssf for single shared file um, and this is in directory two no here it is so i put a readme actually so maybe i should look at this Okay, yes, we can go for single shared also. Okay. So since we have this, both scripts are using this Darshan lib uh, variable to set up the LD preload. Uh, but you can, of course, uh, override directly into the script. It's, it's simple script, you see, you just need to to put the deep preload here. We use this dash and uh, environment variable, but you can do whatever you want. You just need to pinpoint the LD preload to the right uh, place in order to find the dash and library. So let's try to do this single shared dash C. I know if four is, is working actually. Uh, So now there is a single file which is reported, TMP local output. So it means that all the rank are going to write to the same uh, file. So we will have some congestion to observe. And you see that the, the four thread are writing to the same um, file. Maybe I can 
increase the level of congestion this way. So we have doubled the amount of uh, data to be written because every every process is writing 64 uh, meg, but the execution time has been multiplied by four. Let's do this. Of course, there is some. Uh, this is a virtual machine, so we can have a lot of uh, side effect here. Enable to create log file. Okay, so uh, I'm going to to use the same uh, parameters. Single shelf and. Um, Okay, okay, good. So we are going to look for this uh, new log file. So I'm using the same uh, find command. And this should be this file. I have to admit that, uh, let's say that the interface of Darshan is not the uh, easiest one, but well, we are computer scientists anyway. Okay, so looking at the time, this is the right file to to pass. So I'm going calling the Darshan uh, job summary on it. Ah, uh, the folder twenty twenty one has been generated by. Um, the darshan dash mk uh, directory. So, have you run the? I'm I'm asking to to Xiaoni. Uh, have you run the run test dot sh, which was in the darshan directory? Um, let's do this. Okay, uh, so let me go here. Normally, in the Darshan directory, you should have this. Okay, because okay. I, I put this uh, this uh, ESI was uh, not in the Darshan directory. I put outside. So. Pardon me. Okay. You cannot find the ways demo Darshan directory. No, I, I guess the reason is because I downloaded the uh, the the demo Dasha uh, mm -hmm. outside the folder of Dasha. Ah, okay, okay, yes, sure, sure. Uh, sorry about it. Yes, it was implicit. Okay, thanks. So oh, sorry. So if we go, oh, it's still working. There it is. So now I can look at the report. So I'm not saying that the summary report, you know, is uh, the, the holy grail of 
of analysis, it's just that it's convenient. But we can go through the detail analysis of the log file. But already, if you instrument with Darshan your app, your scientific application, on use uh, on your users the job summary uh, script, you should already have important information um, about the need to drill down further uh, using the log analyzer if the IO cost is important. So here again, what we do see is that the IO cost is minimal. Everything is compute. Uh, but again, there is a lot of side effect because we are running on a virtual machine. So the MPI IO layer uh, was responsible for the generation of, 20, of 256 megabytes of data at a rate of half a gig, half a gig per sec, a bit more, 612 megabytes. So we see that We have MPI, we have POSIX. So I'm not sure to understand what is this STDIO uh, part. What is important for us is that we have MPI-IO. And in MPI-IO, we see that metadata is taking a large part. So it's not only about data movement. There is also some metadata overhead. We have, again, or distribution of IO access. So here this is large uh, access in the bucket from 10 to 100 meg. And we see that actually we are making access of 67 uh, megabytes. We are writing continuously, but again, the execution time is very limited. 256 megabytes. And what is interesting here is that we have this. So per branch. So if you are analyzing a large uh, MPA application, it's interesting to know if there is a um, some outliers, some, some MPI rank, which are uh, running slower than, than most of the pack. And basically, they increase the total execution of time. So knowing how much compact is a, a distribution of execution time per a rank is very important. So a single uh, late MPI process can, I mean, is, um, slowing down the whole application. So it, so this is important to check the, the distribution of execution time per MPI rank. So what is important is fastest between slowest. And again, this is virtual system, not a, a real machine. So it's a bit questionable, but here we can check how much uh, uh, spread or at the opposite narrow uh, is the interval between the fastest and the slowest process. And here we have the command line used to generate this. So, any anyone is encountering anybody is encountering uh, issues? So you have other script to play with. So there is dear one, where the idea is to test a file per process versus a shared file. So we can go to directory two. So in dear two, um, and the purpose is to illustrate the difference between sequential access and random access. So sequential means that uh, Based on the past, it's easy to predict the future. So we are basically writing uh, from offset zero to, or reading from offset zero to n. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's very easy for the system to guess what will be the next block of data. And at the opposite random, as you can imagine, is that there is a, um, it's not impossible, let's say, but it's, it's very difficult for the system to predict what will be the next block of data to process based on the path. 
on the past. So of course, this has an impact specifically on Luster, where there is a lot of prefetching, and also in the page cache of Linux, where there is also prefetching. Um, so we need also to, if I'm looking at the scripts, uh, let's say random.sh, we need to set this Darshan lib. It should already be the case based on the experiment from the first uh, directory. Uh, Okay, let's do this. Maybe I should check this. Okay, perfect. So it's already set. So I can run this, uh, let's say, random one because this is random.sh, uh, one client node because it's a sequential, uh, I mean it's a serial system on multiple rank, not just for Okay, good. I'm going to, to check for this uh, new file. Oh, yes. Is this, this one? No. Yes, this is this one normally. Let's see. Okay, if I look at the time, this is correct. I do a Darshan job summary. How do we look at the PDF? Okay. Okay, so we start to get used to this, but now what? So we see that actually the, the throughput is quite bad, but this is expected because this is random. Now I could try to uh, look at the detail IO because here we have a different, uh, since this is random, we should see uh, on the per IO base, we should see a different uh, offset. So we need to set up the um, DXT mode and then run again a Darshan. So let's do this. So to set up the DXT mode, um, there is an environment variable to specify. Okay, here we are. So, do you see it? DXT enable IO trace equal to one. Up. And now we generate. So all the, the process are of course writing on the same file, uh, so it's a bit more complicated than just random. So this is random uh, single chart file. So this is really the worst IO pattern actually. Now, where is my log file? It be this one. Okay, and no, I don't want the summary. I want to use the 
the DXT parser. Oh crap, <laughs> my bad. So the file, okay, let's do this first. So it's a binary file. So to, to be compact, the log file is not a text file or a JSON file or whatsoever. This is a binary format. So it's more compact. So this is why we need to have a, a parser in order to read the binary information and uh, display them in a more human readable form. Uh, so here we are looking at the um, DXT log file. So we have, as for the normal uh, file, uh, a header which describes the file system and some information about uh, when this data has been acquired. Okay, so we have the, the job number, when it was start, on the command line, all of this. information about the different file system which are mounted uh, here. And now we have the GXT. So we have the individual information on every IO request. And what we do see is that offset this different IO system. So we have the time. So the time is increasing linearly, which is OK. Right? This is the first IO, the second IO, and so on. But the offset in the file, they differ. So there is no sequentiality here, which is OK because we have random access. So this is some more what we were expecting. We know this is right, and we see that this is, for the moment, this is rank 0, which is writing. And what we do see is that rank 0 has really random access. Typically, here we are very uh, high in the offset, and now we are uh, quite low. And so let's continue a bit up to see. Um, so we are in the range of a second 13. When is rank one? Okay, so here rank seven, if we go, if we do a tail, we see that rank seven. Uh, did his last IO at second 26. Uh, OK, so it's a bit too much. There is many lines. So here is a, an excerpt of what rank one was doing. So we see that rank one is basically writing starting at second 14. So we can imagine that all the MPI rank has been serialized, which is not surprising because we are on a VM and also we are using a single uh, shared file. And again, there is no uh, sequentiality in the offset. So we have a nice random thing. So we could compare with the sequential one to see if for sequential access, um, the offset reported by Darshan are sequential or not. So this is what we are going to do now. So not random anymore, but. They are writing on single share file, so we, we still have to pay the, some all the, the cost of congestion if you have a large number of uh, parallel nodes, of a large number of processes. But at least the, the um, IO pattern is predictable. So same thing, let's try to find the log file. Second short this is probably this one. Let's double check the timestamp. 
Okay, um, same thing. I want to have the Darshan DXT parser on this log file. And what do I have here? Is something which is more expected. So I have a, a sequentiality in the time, which is normal. So every IO request occurs after one after the other. There is no overlap. And the offset is also increasing. So looking at this, of course, what I should do here is to, to cut and display this as a nice GNU plot. It's easy to see that for the file system, here, it's much easier to predict what will be the next IO pattern, and we can do some very nice buffering scheme, which are more complicated to, to do when it's random access. So, of course, here it's easy because we the script are named random on second show, but for your specific application or one application that has been maybe written by colleagues that you do not know, and if you observe a high IO cost with a job summary, this one is an easy way to check if the cost could be due to random or, uh, or sequential access. So what I've observed, I mean, at least personally, is that the two main culprits for high IO cost are single chart files, so many processes writing to the same file, and also random access. S small random IO on the same file are really uh, um, challenging for file system. So this is what uh, we can see from directory two, but maybe you want to play a bit more with the parameters of the application. If you have any question, uh, I got I got a, a, a small problem. Yeah, I'll write on the next slide. Okay, good. Um, is it possible for you to share your screen? Ah, okay, I see. So in yes okay so maybe we can take as an example um, uh, the screen of uh, Xiaoni so uh, so please share your screen and we'll try to to find out what's going on yeah I'm trying to look for the share screen button <laughs> uh, so there is a plus at the bottom uh, left just below the the shared window i don't think he, um, i mean uh, you have to take a presenter mode for you to be able to do that 
So, um, oh. may maybe I'll shortly just take it away from you and give it to you. Sure. I didn't see a plus. A, yeah, uh, just, just a moment. Yeah. Can you see now? So, uh, I should click on the share an external video. Yes, you should have a, a shared button. Uh, well, Just click, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I clicked. I, I see that there are several things. Yes, normally uh, you can... uh, on the right, just after the video button, this, um, oh, I think. Are you there? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I, uh, I'm back. <laughs> and now I don't see the, pl the, the, the plus. Okay, I'll do, I'll do that again. Um, yeah, sorry about it. Okay, so now on, on the right, um, like in the lower buttons, this the, like the rightmost button, you'll see um, share uh, presentation. Can you see that? Yeah, I see it. Uh, yeah, load a presentation. No, 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 don't go to the plus sign, just on the, on the right side. Oh, yes, right side. Okay, yeah. I see now. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, okay. Okay, excellent. Um, so can you just make full screen your terminal? Okay, excellent. So, yes, so there is a Darshan log file. It's an old one. <laughs> it's an old one, okay. So you have your LD preload. So can you, okay, I see. So you, you, at the, the middle of your screen, I see your export LD preload equal the location of your uh, libdarshan.so, right? Yes. And then after one, you, you call sequential.sh. Yes. And then sequential.sh is telling you that LD preload equal nothing. Zero, yeah. so, so more we have lost the information about LD preload and the explanation is within the uh, sequential.sh is basically resetting LD preload with the value store into a uh, environment variable named darshan dash, uh, not dash, but darshan underscore lib. And if this darshan underscore lib is not set, then basically is just uh, overwriting LD preload. So could you type export darshan underscore lib equal slash usr local lib lib darshan dot so. Then we run the second show dot sh. Yes, exactly. Darshan. It's in the chat. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I see. Okay. And then you can rerun the uh, dot slash sequential page. 
Yeah. Now oh, I'm not sure that C4, so four uh, compute node is going to work. Oh, let's see. Okay, my bad. It's working. Perfect. Okay, so we the script is telling you that LD preload was set to libdarshan. So now we can look for this find. Uh, yes. So are you familiar with control R? Okay. Uh, it's, 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 uh, no, not, 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 not often, no. Okay, <laughs> it, it's a good yes, way to close your, your, your shady story. So okay. now you, we have this, oh, okay. this new log file. Yes. Oh, excuse me. Ah, crap. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, so we can use a job summary on this, this one. Is the previous command? <laughs> yeah, so it's dash dash job dash summary, and you apply it to the um, log file uh, that we, you have uh, highlighted. Uh, can I? How can I change the command? Yeah, just do, just hit Control C. It should be okay, and then you you go for. Uh, dash an dash job dash summary dot ppl. Normally, tab will do the. Um, if you hit tab, it should propose you auto completion. Yeah, I forgot the command, so I will do. To, uh, 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 so we want, uh, yes, yeah, then for this one, uh, dash a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I need the form. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yes, this one. Okay, great. And um, you can check with, uh, I mean, the content of this PDF. Yeah, I will go back to. Uh, I cannot use the XPDF, so I have to go back to the to the window of. Uh, the, the, the file 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 window to ah, okay uh, I don't know it's not so thing. we still have an issue for uh, Xingruan Wong um, where you have a, a partial log file if I'm correct. So maybe the same thing, would it be possible to have uh, your screen online? I think it's pretty cool. I'm oh, sorry, we need, the, we need the screen? We need the presentation mode again? Yes, if you do not mind. No, oh, I don't to do this. So sorry. Uh, Uh, so, if you could promote uh, Xing Grand Wong, uh, so we can see his, his screen or her oh, screen. Okay. Xing Grand, are you there? Did you mention my name? No, no, sorry, no. Um. 
Ah, my, my bad. I, I do not need to have um, the, the presenter mode. It's more, I, I would like to, to see if it's possible to share the screen of uh, Xin Grand Wong. Sorry, I just made it possible for, for Wang to, to share the screen, which yeah, there's no response. Um. Okay, yes, we can see your screen, perfect. So could you make your your terminal window uh, full, full screen or at least larger so we can see better the, the font? To your Ubuntu, can you just enable to create log file? Um, so, can you go to to run test? So, in um, two two directory, uh, two level above, you, we should have the run test, and then we can try run test to see if run test is working. And if you could execute front test. Okay, so no, of course, we we want to see the, the dash and job summary applied to this file. So apparently, he was able to create it. Yes, but can you launch darshan dash job dash summary dot pl apply to to the file that you have highlighted? Okay. Um, no, no. Yes, exactly. First, uh, the the job summary, and then the job summary applied to this file to the dot dash and file will generate the PDF. But first, you need to launch the job summary script to the dot dash and file. 
on the uh, yes. And in the past, I think that what is missing is the uh, in uh, no, pardon me. That's fine. So yes, you just need to copy paste the location of the Darshan file, and it should be okay. Okay, yes, so we, we see your screen, so there is, ah, perfect. Now uh, maybe there is a bit of lag actually. And now if you do LS, we should have a PDF file available. Okay, we're almost there. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay, so I think it's maybe this is not the, the, the best way to handle this because this is taking a bit of time. So what I propose you is that I will write down my email address in the chat. And if you want, we could uh, make a, a call during the week or next week, if you're available to, to talk about this, about Darshan. So. Oh no, I just want, would like to, to, to go to the two other examples that I, because time is running low. So if you have any question related to Darshan, you drop me a line here and we can have a call, oops, pardon me, there's a typo in my mail. We can have a call uh, this week or next week up to you. No, this is not this one that I want to share.
Okay. You should see the... Okay, so you, you should see the, the virtual machine again. So we go back in, into the, um, the terminal, and then in this easy ways, we have two other directory. So let's go quickly. So I think based on the agenda, we have to stop in less than uh, 30 minutes. So maybe we can just spend a bit of time on this. So here the idea is that in the two first initial directory, some all the name was uh, uh, an explanation of the IO pattern. And here in this case, well, it's named mystery.c. So you need using Darshan to, to find what is the IO pattern into this application. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe the readme is not the right one. <laughs> So the, the readme is not really up to date. You see that it's named sequential.sh, but this is a mystery. So if we do this, uh, let's say that mystery.c1.r2, what do we see? just want to check if my environment is correctly set. I have this. So am I able to find my... Uh, okay. I don't see any mystery. Ah, yes, here it is, my bad. It's here. Uh, so, what do I see? Job summary. Okay, so there is a bit of MPIIO. So I know that Mystery is doing MPIIO, not just POSIX. I do see that the exercise is uh, uh, not evenly distributed at all. Everything is in the bucket from 100 byte to 1K, and it's completely write dominated. So I do see that basically I have a lot of uh, call more than uh, 100,000 of them doing 1K access on four uh, IO access with very large amount of data. So here is a timeline. So now the question is that I don't know if this small like IO access are uh, sequential or not. And maybe in order to on this is shared right, so this is shared access. So is there a way for me to check if these are sequential or not? So let me check. Um, so DXT mode was still enabled, so I should be able to do. Uh, DXT uh, Darshan DXT parser from this uh, file and I do more. Oh. 
no DHT parser was not enabled. Hmm. That's weird. Um, Okay. I see a second mystery. It should be this one. Let's check the timestamp. Yes. Oh no. I'm doing the Darshan DXT parser. Hop. Okay, he's reporting an error. Okay, I don't like this. So let's say that here we hit a, a limitation of Darshan, right? <laughs> Too bad my uh, DXT mode was not working for this uh, specific access, specifically the mystery one, which I wanted to, to investigate. So let's go back to directory two. Um, I'm doing a random access again, just to check if I can generate the um, DXT log file. No, that's not the right one. It should have the highest PID. This one should be better. Yes. So let's apply um, DXT parser. Okay, many things. So here it works, and oh, now I just wanted to play a bit with this one. Actually, I've never tried it, so... Okay, I'm not sure this is super interesting, but maybe you can apply this to mystery application. Uh, Darshan analyzer. And, uh, pardon me, what was the mystery log file again? So shared file access, MPI, well, 
I don't think dark in Malaysia is super useful actually. So we have to let's go back to what do we have from the job summary. We know that we have MPI. We know this is right. We know the IO size. So what do we see here is that actually looking at the graph, we have the impression that there is only uh, 100 to 1K byte access. But actually, when we look at the count here, there is four very large uh, writes. And they are not pairing here, of course, because uh, the Y axis is completely, uh, um, what to say this? Um, the scale is making impossible to observe only four axes, but if we do the ratio here, yeah, probably this four axes, they count for more uh, data than this uh, uh, large number of small axes. So this could be a bit misleading in terms of uh, uh, data movement. I'm just trying to see if there is a way to know the on the summary, I think there is no way to know if it's sequential or random. So that's too bad that the DXT mode is not working. Okay. So let's say that uh, basically the, the point is that Darshan is not uh, bug free, uh, neither perfect, but it's still convenient. Okay, so what is this one? Okay, so collective operation. So I don't know uh, to which point you're familiar with the MPI IO interface, but with MPI IO, it's possible to ask uh, specifically to the library to perform uh, buffering. And the idea is that basically you elect a limited number of MPI process as the one who are going to do the IO, and the other MPI process are just going to send the data to this. Uh, specific IO proxy. This is named a collective operation. This can be configured using some uh, MPIO specific call, basically by setting field in a MPI underscore info uh, data structure, which is passed in argument for all the MPIO call. And we, here we are going to see if we can observe this with Darshan uh, one dash. So the whole idea of collective operation uh, is a bit challenging in the sense that if you ask the MPI library to perform optimization, such as this collective operation, it could defeat some other uh, op uh, similar optimization which are placed at an another level in the storage stack. So for instance, the file system may be able to do buffering, but if MPI IO is doing the buffering, somehow we could have a conflict of optimization uh, scheme, which ultimately lead to some kind of performance uh, uh, issue. So it's better to first use a simple method, check if there is a IO override or not. And if there is IO override, then you can investigate for uh, the efficiency of the collective operation um, optimization. But it's not always an optimization. So before coding too complicated IO scheme, please try the simple one. The file system uh, may be smart enough in order to optimize it by itself. And if not, then you can try to optimize um, your IO workload with this fancy optimization such as collective operation. But I would not advocate that as a very, uh, uh, um, as a starting point, you should start with a simple thing and then improve the code if there is an issue with the performance. Uh, so what do we see with Darshan here? Do I have, yes, I have a collective file. Um, Darshan job summary proof. Yeah. 
So R, I see a blue part here. So in terms of number of operations, I see some open, collective open, on collective right. Okay. Um, what else? Read right, so we are completely right dominated. Large right, 10 to 100 meg. So that's neat here. What we see is that we are doing four MPII operation, but ultimately it's, gener it's leading to 16 POSIX operation because MPI will generate POSIX operation underneath. Only write the amount of time. Okay. So what the interesting see, thing here is we see that all the rights is covered by the uh, is con ah, consecutive. So this is that was the thing that I was looking for. So here we see this is sequential access because this is consecutive, and that was not the case for random. So maybe if we go back, oh good. Uh, let me ju just jump here. Uh, I don't need to jump here. Yes, maybe I need to jump here. So here for the sequential on random, if I look at this one, random, so this one should be sequential. Mm, crap. I was hoping to see the, the right part being covered by consecutive in the case of second show, but apparently this is not the case. And for random, I should not see it for sure. For random, yes, there is no consecutive. So maybe if I go to dear one and I do here SSF, do I have consecutive? No, consecutive is not appearing. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm not sure to understand all the subtleties of, of Darshan. I'm just giving you an overview on basically sharing my knowledge on my uh, uh, lack of knowledge on some part. So here for the collective, what is important is that we can detect that we have collective operation. So we can know that this application has been oh was good. So we know that there is some collective operation that's good. I'm a bit puzzled by this blue consecutive bar and yeah. maybe I would need to check a bit more the documentation to understand why this one is appearing here or not in the previous uh, summary. And I guess this is what I wanted to present you today. Of course, all your questions are very welcome. We have 10 more minutes. Maybe a, a simple question. Uh, I mean, uh, if we wanted to evaluate which one has the better performance, which met, uh, I guess we can f look at the, 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 the first two lines of this uh, PDF file, uh, give some get some information about the IO speed. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, for, for some, some information, the other information in this PDF file seems not very clear to me uh, uh, yet. Do you have? Uh, can you give more information? Uh, more more information? Well, I, I have to say that for me also, this summary is sometimes a bit puzzling. Uh, to be clear and honest, 
So not, not everything is super clear. What I know that when I'm using this, I go first for this, uh, this one, so the, the first graph, the yellow one, and if the IO bar is high, then I look further into the detail. If the IO bar is small, so here in your case, we see that MPI is basically taking 10% of the execution time, then I have an issue. The second thing I'm looking at, so first, what is the cost of IO? Second thing I'm looking at is this. So here I do see that I have a throughput of 400 megabytes per sec. So of course it depends on which system you're running. If you're running on a very a powerful HPC system, 400 megabytes is unacceptably low, right? This is extremely low. If I'm running on my laptop, then okay, this is maybe a fraction of what my SSD can deliver. But because this is a small I.O., so total amount of data written, 256 megabyte, it's small. So that would be some of the three information I will first try to correlate. What is your cost of I.O.? What is the amount of data written? And at what was the, uh, the throughput? And then if I have a I, a large volume of I.O. on the I throughput, I don't care because the throughput is good. If I have a high volume of I.O. on the bad throughput, then probably here this is very high. Then it means that the I.O. part is important in my application. Then I will go down to understand what's going on. And the first thing I will look at is this. What is the I.O. size? So most of the time, large I.O. deliver good performance on small I.O., even if they are random, even if they are on a shared file, as long as this is large I.O., the file system underneath should be able to handle this efficiently. So for me, this 10 megabyte I.O. should be okay. What I do expect when the I.O. Uh, cost is high on the throughput is bad, because again, if I'm, you know, writing one petabyte of data, I do expect that the IO cost is important in my application, but this is normal because I'm writing a huge amount of data. What I'm looking at is not a high fraction of IO cost, but more um, an IO cost, which is an inefficient IO, uh, IO cost. So on this efficiency is basically the throughput that I can observe here. So normally when I have bad uh, throughput, it's because I have small IO. And then if I have small IO, I will look also at this. You can see on the pair file basis, who is concentrating the IO. So on this simple example, I have just two or three files, but for real application, for example, we did analysis for oil and gas application, complex uh, pipeline. You have maybe 14 dif uh, 40 different files, and you can see that one file is concentrating all the cost and because this is a, the mesh uh, representing the, the geology of the, of the reservoir. So, uh, Let's say that for me, maybe two thirds of the information is this summary are already too much detail, and I'm only focused on the first third, which has these two lines, this guy here, this graph, and here the IO size. And the last point is that which file is concentrating the IO cost. Is it answering your, your question, or is it a bit too confusing? Uh, it's quite helpful, <laughs> thanks. I mean, it's okay to say that it's confusing, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's true that we don't have, I don't have all the information, but I, you give uh, key information. That's quite helpful. I mean, you can, if you have a Darshan log file for an application of interest, I'm not saying that I'm a Darshan expert, I can look at it uh try to understand with you what's going on and if it's too complicated then we can send an email to the dash and mailing list you know so can i ask uh, 
where do you work? <laughs> I'm, I'm based at DDN. It's, it's a storage company. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But Darshan people uh, are in a national lab in the US, and this is open source code. So I suppose they are willing to... I mean, at least I know that there is some traffic on the Darshan mailing list, and they answered questions to the people. Okay. I mean, if other people have questions, I may leave other people. Otherwise, I have one small question <laughs> again. Sure, please go ahead. Uh, okay, um, I, uh, so I I I have to clarify the the sequence on a random. Do you mean do you mean the diff This means different uh, way of ac accessing uh, data, right? Yes. So in a file of uh, let's say ten megabyte, you can write the whole file by making uh, by writing megabyte zero, one, two, three, four, up to nine. Or you can write it in a different order, but at the end, all the 10 megabytes will be written in the right place, in the right offset. However, for the file system, this is not the same because what the file system can do, if you write a megabyte one, two, three, four, it will buffer this in this internal cache, and then it will make a large write on the device, a four megabyte write, and it will be very efficient because you have these crazy things, you know, with a platter which is rotating, so you need to position the head on the platter, and then you do the right. So the override of positioning the head, the head at the right place is important. And then after, when you are writing sequentially, uh, basically the throughput is very good. So buffering is an efficient way for the file system to optimize the performance of the underlying uh, file system. However, if you are making a random write, you may uh, write the megabyte one, five, six, and seven on the buffer. The internal buffer of the file system is full. So we need to, to flush the buffer down to the device. But this is not sequential. So it means that the first megabyte will lead to uh, positioning the head at the specific place. Then you can write only one megabyte. Then you will write the next megabyte, I mean, the megabyte number, I don't know, four. You need to move the head, put the head at the right place, and then write uh, this one megabyte. So you will have to move the head four times. So the lack of sequentiality is basically um, leading to additional operation at the physical layer. So there is a, a degradation of the performance. Okay. So usually, I, I suppose that the sequential is is wide, more widely used in writing. Output. Well, I mean, you, you should use sequential <laughs> as much as you can. Okay. Sometimes you, the physics of your code, you know, mm -hmm. the, the algorithm pre prevents you uh, because it's complicated from an algorithmic standpoint to have sequential access. So sometimes you cannot have sequential I.O. What I'm saying is that just it's lead to suboptimal IO pattern, but maybe this is not important because if you have suboptimal IO pattern, but then because you are uh, doing this random access, you can have a very efficient computational part. The gain in computation will completely uh, cover for the uh, small loss in IO. So it's a trade-off that only the application developer can really uh, um, understand. Okay. This, so in the dis distributed sys, uh, system, we, we 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 can run uh, uh, commutations at different uh, pro processes, and so I I suppose that this in this case is uh, rather random, right? The, 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 the collection of results, of, uh, final results, uh, and, and then... Yes, probably. I mean, so um, typically, 
if you are doing um, if you are writing down the result in the same file and then when every MPI process finishes computation and start to write then you will you will end up with some kind of random uh, write access however if each of this MPI file is right, MPI process is writing it to a specific file, then you will have sequential access. Every process will write its result in its own file, so there is no randomness. Everyone will write sequentially. And then after you can have a phase where basically you aggregate this sequential file into a single large file. So you can play a bit with post-processing in order to optimize the performance. Okay. But again, maybe this is not an issue. You should first, you know, do the things which are convenient for you and then in the second stage, check if the performance are okay or not. Mm. All right. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're very welcome. It's it's so nice to have questions. You know, usually I talk and at the end it's like, goodbye. <laughs> anyway, so Julian, maybe I let you conclude the session because you are the big boss here. Thank you very much for that honor. I think it was a very nice session. Thank you so much for the presentations, um, Sai and Jen Toma. Um, and I hope everyone has interest in this topic. Later in our other session, you will learn a little bit about some theoretic models to analyze performance as well. And I think that really shows and really complements this effort that you learned with Darshan, putting in perspective the numbers that you see um, in order to know is this a good number or a bad number. So I wish you a great um, lunch now and we reconvene in almost an hour. Thank you so much.